got Guru Kiran from May.com. Um, he's going to be talking about test automation, which uh, I used to be a tester, so one of the things I've always had a uh, struggle with is automating uh, Magento in general. It's always been a, a pain, um, and it's always been tricky, and he solved it. And uh, I've never seen uh, an automation uh, uh, stack that works as well as this, as fast as it did, that covers the amount of regression tests, that catches um, anything that, well not anything, but <laughs> anything that we miss, he's able to add in really quickly. Anyway, it's one of the best uh, automation stacks I've seen, so I told him that he had to present, um, and had to do it, and he did. So, uh, Guru. Hey. Uh, thank you much. Well, this is my first major to meet up. Good. Uh, I've been working with Me.com for the last two and a half years. Uh, presently a lead QA engineer there. And uh, uh, Mitch did convince me uh, to, show, uh, to just share what we have come up with, uh, the challenges we have faced, uh, the decisions we have taken to really build this framework, and the present state of it. So uh, feel, feel free to interrupt me if you're not uh, sure anything, but uh, there's this one way of automating it, that an array of ways of doing it, and uh, I'm sure uh, many of you are trying diff different ways. But there's, there's just the challenges and what we have done here at Meet.com. So uh, for any of you who don't know Meet.com, we are an um, e-commerce company who, sell, uh, who are specialized in selling uh, furnitures. Uh, we are in the market for the last five years now, and uh, uh, in the last two years, we have got this exceptional uh, exponential growth really, really quickly. Uh, we, were, we were only in UK just two years ago, and now we are in another five more countries. So on an average, we have been adding a new country every four, four to five months. So uh, being a tester, it's always a challenge to, to really test all the customizations which go with every country, uh, with new payment gateways, with new uh, customized uh, 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 delivery uh, forms and every, every smallest detail and being in uh, agile and uh, being in agile and bi-weekly releases uh, it's always a challenge to cover the regression uh, so if you want to release at the end of the second week you, you need to really make sure all the um, uh, pretty much the regression on every country works fine every store works fine so we, we presently use uh, Magento uh, self-hosted enterprise edition we did, we did upgrade recently and um, uh, as, as you saw, uh, we, we did realize this challenge that um, unless uh, uh, we, 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 we move forward towards automation, it will be a real challenge manually to cover the amount of regression at the end of the sprint to make sure we have got a good coverage and uh, do a good release. So uh, as, as, as you can see, the graph really shows. If you really have manual testers, the, the bottom line really shows the amount of coverage a manual tester can get. It, it really doesn't increase. And uh, it's, it's always a challenge. You really need to keep on adding more manual testers with more number of stores you have. So, uh, so once, once we realized that, uh, we, did, we did move towards automation. This was a couple of years ago. So, uh, Mitch, next slide, please. Good. So, <laughs> bear with me. I, I have no control on the slide control. <laughs> Good. Uh, so once we understood we really have to automate the system, uh, the first question was what to automate. Now there's Magento, there's <coughs> front end, and there's still the inventory management piece of it. So what, what do we really need to automate? The first thing what we did was to look at the testing pyramid. I don't know how many of you are aware of testing pyramid. It's, a, it's basically a, a popular uh, principle of saying what to automate. It, it divides uh, uh, what to automate in, in a system. It divides it in basically three layers, the bottommost layer being the unit test cases. Uh, it, it, expects, it expects the developers to put a very good uh, layer of unit test case, uh, mainly because it's quicker and it tells whether you're building the um, system right. So that's, that's the first layer. And then the next layer is basically the UI and the web, web, uh, web service assertions. Uh, so it's, it's basically customer facing. Um, and uh, uh, the last layer is, uh, as you see, it's just a small bit of it, which is basically the manual testing. So if you've got a good set of unit testing coverage, you've got a good set of web service and uh, uh, UI assertion, the only thing you need to do is to be, uh, basically do a bit of manual testing during the sprint. And at the end of the sprint, you know, the uh, product what you have to release, it's fairly good and stable. So that's something which we understood. But um, being, a, being a Magento system, the challenge was to uh, come up with unit test cases. And uh, uh, with, with, with understanding, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's basically from the development team, uh, it, was, it was a challenge to bring in, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to really uh, create any uh, dependency injections or create any mock, 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 mock Magento, mock, uh, mock the modules. 
So we did we did really not go with the unit test uh, unit test layer. So what we what we really have is basically a UI and a web service coupled um, and uh, automation environment. Uh, basically, uh, we try to uh, go on uh, uh, asserting a typical customer flow, typical user flow. And uh, that was tightly coupled with um, uh, making sure we could um, use the Magento APIs to update basically the stocks or change the stock, change the price, and make sure that uh, uh, the sale price is seen. So they were both coupled, the UI and also the uh, API-based testing. So uh, we, we did do that. Uh, once once that was understood, we did have few top rules, uh, no content assertions. That was a basic thumb rule. Uh, every, every automation framework or automation tester I've spoken to, uh, they have this huge pain in maintaining the whole framework mainly because they don't assert the element, but they end up asserting or verifying the text on that element. So the text, being an e-commerce company, the text is always changing, and it's huge maintenance, so don't, don't, ever, uh, don't ever assert the content. Uh, next thing was uh, basically do specific functional uh, test case, uh, automate only specific functional piece, and not really the user flow or the end-to-end -end flow. Uh, when you make end-to-end -end flows, there are more dependencies, and uh, again, there are chances of it to break much easier, and huge maintenance cost. And uh, we always start with the riskier or the critical part of the business. You always do that. Uh, yeah. Good. So once we once we knew uh, what we had to automate, and uh, uh, so the next question was how how do we go about doing this? Uh, Magento, as uh, uh, Selenium WebDriver was the first first uh, uh, best tool what we could find for the user interaction assertion. Uh, but again, uh, I'm not sure how many of you are aware. Magento does ship with uh, Selenium and does have a default set of framework. But but again, a couple of years ago when we checked it, it really was uh, using Selenium 1.0, which is quite prehistoric presently, and uh, it has very uh, very s a small set of browsers and uh, uh, array of methods which it supports. So uh, we did decide not to really use the existing one which Magento ships with and really use uh, Selenium WebDriver. Uh, we did go with Java basically and not PHP, uh, mainly because uh, Selenium, when they came out with Selenium 2.2, they were very clear that they are going to only support four programming languages, uh, Java, uh, C Sharp, uh, Python, and Ruby. And PHP was something which was going to be supported by third parties. And uh, so we, we did not want to take a chance of uh, uh, waiting for a bug to be fixed and not, not really uh, getting that fixed. So we did go with Java. And uh, the, the, uh, the other reason why we went with Java is because uh, the test framework or uh, the runner what we have is basically from TestNG. This, this, this basically helps us to run the test suites in parallel. It helps to run the tests in parallel. So you have suites running in parallel. You have uh, test within the suites running in parallel, so it's it's a uh, it's an amazing amount of uh, reduction in time. So if you have ten tests, which which would take really uh, sixty minutes to run, you could easily finish those ten tests in six minutes by running them in parallel. So test engine really helps us to do that. And uh, Ant basically uh, Ant and Maven are build tools, and uh, that's that's quite popular around. And Magento API, we 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 did end up using XML RPC. We have uh, enough support with Java uh, XML RPC libraries. So uh, we. Uh, <coughs> I, I presume you all know that Magento opens up uh, the APIs with uh, basically three web services, uh, REST, SOAP, and XML RPC. Uh, the main reason we use XML RPC is because the downstream system, what we have, open ERP, it communicates with Magento with XML RPC. So this can give us opportunity to uh, also target a uh, few customized APIs. So that's the reason we went with uh, XML RPC. And uh, the rest is quite obvious with uh, Selenium Grid. We wanted all, uh, we wanted the test to be running in parallel, not really sequential, so Selenium Grid was used. Uh, we did uh, uh, have a number of virtual machines created. Uh, we have around 30 concurrent processes running right now. Uh, there's a cross-browser support, and uh, the, the whole uh, crux of the whole uh, 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 framework works with the uh, design pattern with page object, basically to reduce uh, uh, redundancy of the code. So that's, that's, that's what uh, uh, the whole stack is for. And uh, presently, uh, as Mitch co conveyed, we have a huge coverage with checkout. Um, uh, as you know, checkout is the critical part of it. It's, it has so many combinations. A, a new user checkout, existing user checkout. Now add to that a single product, multiple product, uh, multiple quantity for the same product. You see, the number of combinations which you can do with even gift cards or a, a campaign code which is added to that. So it's, it's, uh, it's too, too, too many. And add to that uh, the number of payment gateways, which are specific to each country. Uh, Italy uh, loves bank transfer. Uh, London. Uh, pretty much goes with credit card. So there are, there are so many array of uh, uh, payment gateways which need to be verified on every country. 
So uh, we did we did um, a target checkup first, and uh, we have got a huge uh, uh, success for doing uh, the whole uh, storage checkup. Um, and the rest is uh, uh, like um, uh, catalog, catalog inventory. Uh, we have got uh, we are still working on the customer part of it, uh, address books, and uh, making sure addition and deletion part of those test case. And uh, uh, the other areas which we also have coverage is on the email assertion. Uh, we do make sure that once the order is placed, we get uh, the emails. Uh, we, we do assert that the order confirmation emails are sent. The order confirmation emails have the right data in them and uh, uh, pretty, pretty basic assertion to make sure that uh, the customer sees the right data uh, after making orders. Uh, product feed, uh, product feed basically, uh, the challenge was uh, we used to send product feed which, uh, which had broken URLs. So uh, we had tests which are headless browsers, basically running um, uh, 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 all the URLs in the product feed and making sure that uh, uh, there are no 404s in them. And uh, there is a flag if there's even a single 404s and emails everyone uh, who's required to know about that. And uh, image assertion, uh, being an e-commerce site, uh, it would be too painful to see any images broken and uh, that's not really nice. So we have something which asserts the image, uh, uh, basically looks at the natural height and si uh, width of the image and basic, uh, uh, conveys if it's broken or not. And uh, tags, uh, Google Analytics, uh, I think uh, uh, with every release, nobody really pays more attention to the tags. And there's always a possibility that the tags can certainly get broken. And we, we, we get to know about it after a couple of days, of, uh, at least three, four days, and uh, someone comes back and, and really conveys that uh, there's not, the whole site's not working, but it's really working, but it's just the tags which broken. So uh, we, we do have a, a test which assess the tag. Basically, we have a proxy which uh, 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 which controls all the traffic and uh, 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 it passes the HAR file, uh, file basically, and then looks for the tags which is filed, and uh, that's 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 asserted too. And uh, next one, Mitch. So once once we had this whole system in place, continuous integration was inevitable. We had to we had to move towards continuous integration, and uh, uh, again, Jenkins was the easiest thing to uh, use. Uh, anyone who has used Jenkins uh, will know that uh, uh, creating jobs is piece of cake on Jenkins. Uh, once we had all the stack in place, we could just uh, uh, create. Uh, uh, we just had to use the default plugins which were uh, shipped with Jenkins. Uh, so uh, uh, we, we, we did create jobs which would uh, really pull the latest code, uh, invoke the uh, test runs, and uh, have overnight runs. Uh, we do have overnight runs on live UAT and staging. Uh, the biggest challenge is basically to triage them. Or, or, uh, whenever they finish running. So uh, we, we also have the uh, short regression. Basically, you cannot run the whole regression when, it's, uh, when, when you want to do a smoke or a sanity test, which will take an hour to finish. Uh, we have a subset of critical set of uh, tests, for instance, checkout, basically making sure checkout works in every store, uh, to run very quickly. And that takes quick five minutes to run. So that's a short set of regressions, which is basically a subset. So that's also scheduled to uh, run. So that's pretty much with continuous integration. And uh, this is basically the dashboard what we have. As you see, we, uh, we are pretty much on five countries right now. Uh, we just moved to a cloud-based environment, and uh, you know, as you can see, it takes around 30 minutes on an average. Uh, these are because of the new environment we have worked on. Uh, uh, anything, any, any test which takes around, uh, any test, test run which takes around two hours, trust me, it's not really, really useful. So these are complete uh, regression runs on different stores. You can see the number of coverage, the failure percentage. You get the summary of it, and once each of these job finishes, you get a email uh, representing the summary of what was run, what was broken. Uh, we also have different tabs here. If you look closely, there are uh, jobs which are scheduled for UAT runs, uh, staging. Uh, but again, we don't run the full set of regressions on staging, basically because uh, uh, staging uh, uh, gives false positive on the stories which are being still developed. So it's just a small set of regression on staging. So this is basically the uh, uh, setup we have. Cool. Uh, what, what's this framework really caught in the last two years now? We have been uh, uh, developing this framework for the last two years, and uh, what I can uh, really uh, highlight is the checkout blockers. Uh, we have been able to handle all kind of uh, checkouts which, which can break from JavaScripts to... Uh, you, there have been instances where you, you push in a change for Italy, and you, you see the checkout on Netherlands broken. <laughs> So uh, it's, it's, always, it's, always the, it's always the case. So the regressions were really good enough to uh, highlight that during uh, staging and also on UAT once all the uh, release candidates really built. Uh, the, the second one, uh, basically, uh, this was recent one. Uh, I don't know how many of you use uh, Vanish for uh, uh, caching browser side. And uh, uh, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy to go and change configurations on Vanish to change any URLs. And uh, we have live runs here. And uh, one of uh, recently, the configurations were changed just before everyone left, left for the day, and um, uh, everything broke. Basically, people could not add product to the basket. So uh, first thing what we did was, one, well, the next day, the first thing once we were in office, we could see the regressions fail. 
basically because you cannot add more than one product to the basket, and they got redirected back to the basket. So this, this, was, this was something which was on live. So <coughs> having live regression overnight runs is really useful. And uh, the third one, this is my personal favorite because this keeps happening always. With Magento uh, uh, shopping cart rules, uh, they are marketing folks who really love to uh, provide more shopping cart rules, pr uh, provide discounts to users. Uh, they do create uh, different shopping cart rules and uh, instead of creating specific shopping cart rules, they end up creating a very generic one. Instead of getting a, a discount for, uh, for a sofa, they give discount for everyone who buys anything on me.com. So uh, that, that's something which we have, uh, we have been able to highlight uh, very, very many often. And um, uh, basically sale, uh, whenever we go out of sale and go into sale, we make sure that the sale prices have been uh, uh, removed and really, uh, or when we go into sale, we make sure the sale price is not only on the category listing page, but also on the basket. So that's, that's something which I had to, and product feed, I already briefed you about the product feed issue with 404s and the headless browser. Yeah. Good. Uh, well, uh, the challenges what what we have faced till uh, till date is pretty much uh, with the performance. Um, as I told you, uh, unless you have a test complete test suite which runs in 15 minutes or 30 minutes, it's not useful. Anything which runs for two hour, two to three hours, it really takes too long for you to really go to be pretty much doing continuous integration. So you need to be aiming something uh, which which really finishes 30 minutes. So uh, that's that's been the performance part of it. So uh, making the suites run in uh, test suites run in parallel with each other, making the uh, uh, test within the test suites run in parallel with each other. So that was the challenge, and uh, I think TestNG was really useful in um, helping us with that. Uh, VM machines again. Uh, uh, every, every time you run the test in parallel, it's always the amount of resources which these machines use. You really need to have a good combination of uh, hardware. Uh, you need to make sure that what's the threshold uh, browser you can use a threshold number of uh, uh, instances which you can run on. So that's that's been a challenge. It's always a, a, a try and a, a fail and try and so it's, it's pretty much uh, that was challenge. Uh, we have overcome that too. Uh, test maintenance unless unless you really triage triage the test results every day morning or once in a couple of days the test results go downhill and uh, uh, nothing if, if they're not green and if they're not really good. Uh, it's not useful. So you really need to uh, triage them and you really need to have a good cycle of triage cycle and verify that uh, they are really failing for a real reason or not because of a test issue or a false positive step. So that, that really has to be uh, done. And test data. Uh, test data, uh, being an e-commerce company, you really need to assert uh, uh, for an existing user to be, be able to check out. So there are existing user data and uh, different data which you are dependent on. So there's a challenge to really uh, use a, a, a common set of data on live uh, on the test environment. So uh, we, have, we have been using basic uh, scripts to basically insert this data on all the test environments every time we do a database refresh. So that's that's something of the challenge. So uh, the next next section is basically the uh, road ahead. Uh, we 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 pretty much cover the functional uh, uh, cover a functional test case basically. The next thing we need to really uh, focus on, we are trying to focus on, is the styling assertion. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, anybody of you are using um, Phantom CSS here. Uh, we are we are trying to see if we can use Phantom mm -hmm. CSS and uh, try to get the styling assertion completed. Uh, mobile coverage, that's 50% uh, of our traffic is on mobile. So mobile coverage is the next thing. And uh, yes. performance testing, that, that's something which is very minimal, which would, we have at JMeter, which is very minimal. With one country, we want to extend that. And finally, <coughs> continuous delivery. So uh, we, we spoke about, uh, we, we spoke about continuous integration, uh, continuous delivery is ability of anyone who can run this test locally. We, we have functional coverage, we have style, uh, style coverage, we have uh, uh, performance coverage and security coverage. So anyone who pushes the code and gets this, uh, uh, gets asserted that in the next 30 minutes your code is good enough to go to live, so that's, that's pretty much continuous delivery. Hopefully by the end of year we will we'll be somewhere there. <laughs> yeah? so, um, I, I would like to show the quick uh, demo in there, if you don't mind. Just, yeah, the, Short demo there, so it's uh, it's pretty much. Uh, I'll, I'll just uh, I'll just invoke the test locally. Uh, yeah, the oops. Uh, Make you just forward the whole thing. <laughs> uh, the Selenium Hub and Selenium Grid is running on the left uh, left terminal. The, the test just got invoked. It's basically a checkout test, and uh, it's it's navigating to a product. It's just got the API, uh, got the product which is in uh, stock for a particular price. Uh, it's just adding it to the basket, increasing the number of quantity in it, making sure all the price, the subtotal, everything is in place. Adds a gift coupon. Make sure that the discount is seen on it. Uh, checks out as a new user. Uh, adds all the new user detail. Make sure that the order summary is looking fine, uh, make sure that the delivery and every other elements look uh, seen there, uh, <coughs> continue and uh, pretty much do a payment with the card, there's a test card, there's a test environment what we have, a test card, and uh, once the payment's complete, uh, it 
asserts that uh, the status, the state of this order on Magento, basically if you have an uh, invalid state, you don't want that order to be really uh, imported to a downstream system, so it asserts the uh, order state, uh, make sure that the email confirmation, it, it did look at the email confirmation, it's quite quick, so it did look at the email confirmation email, asserted for the order, and then finally uh, looked at the order history, made sure that the order history has the same number of uh, uh, products which was bought, and uh, it, it, it did send across an email to me saying that this was bought. So that's that's pretty much it, and uh, yeah, that's uh, uh, much. Uh, that's it. Yeah. If you have any questions.